Hello, this is a video looking at vectors in forces. We've looked at vectors before in the projectiles unit and even before that in the kinematics unit that preceded it. And now we're going to look at vectors in Newton's laws. And we'll be looking at uh, various vectors pointing in different directions. And our point is in this to add the vector components to find a resultant. And then we're going to use Newton, Newton's second law to find the acceleration or mass. And as you recall, Newton's second law says that the net force is equal to ma. That's what we'll end up using for finding the acceleration. Hopefully you recall the terms vector components, things like that. We should be good to go with that now. Before we get anywhere else, there's a few things you need to do. Uh, first off, have a calculator out and make sure it's in degree mode. You must be in degree mode for this, otherwise things are going to go very wrong. So be sure you're in degrees mode, then we can work through these problems. So here's a diagram. This is the situation. You have a diagram of an object being pulled by multiple forces. It's a bird's eye view, so you're looking down on the situation happening. That means this is not really a free body diagram. There are more forces going on here, and we don't have to worry about them. We're just going to worry about what is going to happen with these three forces and how they're pulling this object. We basically want to figure out which way is this thing's net force, and therefore which direction is this object's acceleration. And if you'll recall, Newton's second law says that the net force will produce an acceleration that is directed in the same well, direction as the net force. In other words, whichever way the net force is going, that's the way the acceleration will be going. As with everything else, there's always the few steps that I've told you. The whole idea of Rudolph, where, where these steps are followed, where first off we should read the problem, we should underline the details, <clears throat> draw out a picture if necessary, this one's provided so we don't have to do that, and then organize our data, and then do the formula. The same thing happens here, except in a different format. Well, here are the steps. The first step is to be in degrees mode, which we've already established. Next one is to find the angles, which I'll go through with you. Then we're supposed to make a t-chart. Following that, we're going to put the components of each vector in the t-chart. Then we're going to add all these components, and then we're going to use the resulting components. The thing we get at the very bottom of the table, we're going to draw out the resulting vector. I'll have these steps in the background, and we'll go through them. I realize, oops. I realized that 5 was actually supposed to be a 6. Sorry about that. But I also realized that this is a lot of steps. You can kind of shorten this into less steps with more than one step within, if you wish. But let's go through this as it is. Step 1, as you recall, is to find the vectors. Or not the vectors, sorry. Step 1 was actually to put your calculator in degrees mode, and we've already done that a number of times, so I think we're good. The next step was to find the angles. So the reason I say that is that you see you have a 30 degree angle here, which is fine and good, but then this is 130 degrees. Now that's for the angle that goes between these two. So we're going to have to figure out what exactly the angles are for each of these vectors based upon that. First off, if, uh, and i got to move some things on you. If this is 30 degrees at this point here, <coughs> we could draw out the rest of this axis. There have to be 90 degrees between all all of these axes, so the y-axis here and the x-axis here, has to be separated by 90 degrees. You'll remember that from geometry. Now, this must be 60 because of that. 60 and 30 make 90, so that's the only way we can make that work. That makes a 90 degree angle between our y-axis and our x-axis. Well, if the angle down here was 130, then what we have to decide on is, well, how much is left over here? It's this portion here. And basically, you're going to take 130 minus the 60 we already have, and you're going to find out that you have 70 left over. That makes this angle 70 degrees. Okay, cool. That's step two. Check. Check. Make a T-chart. Now, this T-chart is going to be for our X and Y direction. We only have two-dimensional vectors here. That's kind of convenient. We could have three. We could have the Z direction. Let's not worry about that. So we have x and y, because we know we can break these vectors down into their vertical and horizontal components. So we need enough of these lines to have all of our vectors plus 1. So that's room for one of them, that's room for two of them, that's room for three of them, and then I have room for the resultant below. So what I'll do is I'll number these. Vector 1, vector 2, vector 3, and the last one's the resultant. When we add all these vectors together, that will be our resultant. Now, I have to decide what vector is what. I'm going to decide that this is vector 1, this is vector 2, and this is vector 3. 
<clears throat> just I can decide to do that. You could decide to do any number of different combinations. It's not a big deal. It just matters that you decide which ones are which so when you fill out your table, you're clear on it. Now, there's another step here. At least I like to think there's another step here, and I think it's convenient to do so right now. So we've made our T-chart. Now, before we find the components, and maybe between steps three and four, it's kind of convenient to decide on the signs of each of these vectors. For vector number one, we know that that is pointing to the upwards in the y direction and to the right for x, kind of like north and east. So east or to the right is positive for x, and north or up is positive for y. So we'll put a positive and positive. They both have to be positive values. Remember, with vectors, direction is important because direction gives the sign. For vector number two, it's pointing southeast. Now you also could look at that as down and to the right. So east or to the right for x is positive. Down or to the south is negative for y, so we have a negative sign for our y part. Lastly, vector number three is just pointing to the west. That is a flat line. It looks like it's flat, and honestly, I'm just going to assume it is perfectly flat, and you have every right to do so. And if you do so, just write it down in the problem. If you think that mine's off by a bit, you say, look, I assume this is flat, just to the left. Or you could also look at that as to the west, which means that for x, it's negative because it's going to the left or to the west. Now, for y, there is nothing because it's just horizontal. And because it's just horizontal, there is no vertical component. So we already know the y value is zero for that one. That's actually taken us a lot, way, a lot of the way to the solution. Step four is to find the components of each vector, and place them in the chart. Alrighty, well that's the step that takes the most time. That's the one that we're going to take a little bit of time with here, so let's be ready for it. Best way I find to do this is to redraw your vectors. So I'm going to redraw vector number one. Same style, it's 30 degrees still, 20 newtons, oops, and uh, this was 30.0 I believe, so I should probably be consistent, there we go. <clears throat> so there's my vector number one. Now what I have to do is find the horizontal and vertical components of that vector, in other words I have to find the x and the y values for this. This would be my x because it is a horizontal line, and this is my y because it is a vertical line. All right, in order to do this, what you're going to do is use sine and cosine. It's basic geometry, actually, is that you're going to take, like, there's sine of 30 degrees, and the sine, if I were to take it, would be opposite, which would be x, divided by hypotenuse, which would be 20.0. All so that's a good start. Now what we can do is if you multiply both sides by our 20, you should get x on its own, you get 20, 0 0.0 newtons times sine of 30.0 equals x. And all you have to do is plug in the numbers and you should get a value for x. <coughs> Ooh, I'm sorry about that. I thought I had it paused the whole time and I just made you watch that whole thing. I'm sorry about that. I thought I had it paused. My fault. Okay, so... Do we have 10 newtons for that? Apologize for the coughing, too. Kind of got a little throat issue here. All right, so x equals 10. Now, to find y, what we are going to do is we're going to say that we're looking at the cosine. And the cosine will do adjacent. So the cosine of 30 is equal to y, which is our adjacent, divided by our hypotenuse, which our hypotenuse in this case is 20. And again, we're just doing algebra. Multiply both sides by 20 so we can get the y on its own. And now we see that our y is equal to 20 newtons times the cosine of 30. There we are, and we just do the math, and you should get a result. This time I'll actually pause it. All right, you get 17.3 newtons. Okay, so we have the components of this vector. We have our x portion and our y portion. Now we have to put those into the table. So for x with vector number 1, it is 10 newtons. And for y, it was 17.3 newtons. There we are. And we've already done the signs, which is convenient, because now we don't have to worry about guessing whether they were right or not. You could have done it in this step, too, but it's a little more convenient to have already gotten it done. That way, that's not a mistake you make later on in the problem when you're focusing on other things, such as what's the next vector we have to work on. So vector number two, we'll redraw vector number two.
So this is vector 2. Now we're looking for our x and our y components here. x is always the horizontal line and y is always the vertical line. That's just the way it works. You want that stuck in your mind, by the way. Don't forget about that. Uh, let's see here. To figure this out, we're going to take the sine of 70 degrees, and in this case, the opposite is actually y. Last time, it was x. And our hypotenuse is 18.0. Oops, that's an ugly 18. <coughs> there we are. And you're going to solve this. Now, I'm going to show you what it's going to look like after doing the algebra, because I believe at this point you know how to do the algebra. That's what you're going to end up with. You'll end up with 16.9 as your solution. Next, you're going to take the cosine of 70 degrees so that we can get the x portion. We want the horizontal portion of this vector. And since the cosine is adjacent, then we take our x over our hypotenuse, which is 18. And again, I believe at this point, I don't necessarily have to do the algebra for you, because I think you know how to do it. There we are. And you should find that your x value is 6.16 newtons. Okay, now all we have to do is fill those values in to our table. Our, our y value was 16.9 newtons, and our x value was 6.16. Now you want to be really cautious about what you place into the table. I've placed the x value and the y value incorrectly. I would have messed with you and set them in the wrong place at the wrong time just to see if you're paying attention, but I want to make sure we're doing this right the first time. But you don't want to flip the x and the y. You want to be very, very cautious about that. So make sure you're very mindful about what value is going in the x column, which one's going in the y column. Be very careful about that. Okay, for vector number three, we don't have to redraw it because it's just pointing to the west, which means all 15 newtons have to go to the west. There is no y component. We've already put a zero in there to show that. So we've got it set just fine. Now all you have to do is add these things together. Remember, in vector math, you don't subtract. You just add numbers that happen to have negative signs on them. So we add all these up, making sure that that 15 does have a negative sign, and you end up with 1.16. <coughs> and now for the other side, we have a 17.3 added to a negative 16.9, which you can think about as subtracting if you wish. And we end up with 0 0.40 newtons. Now, technically, that's going to actually be just 0.4 newtons. Um, there's a rule in sig figs that says you can only have the shortest distance from the decimal point. The shortest dis distance in this case is the tenths column, which means we can only have the tenths column in our answer. Well, now we have a result, and then I believe we can go down here and say step one is done, step two is done, step three is done. Find the vectors and put them each in their place in the chart. Yeah, add all the components, surely. And now step six, which was a five before. Uh, step six, using these resulting components, draw out the resulting vector. Now that's going to be our end step. That's going to be it. Once we're at that point, we're going to be able to say, hey, all we do is one basic calculation, we're done. All right, so to draw this out, you'll notice that this is a positive value and this is a positive value. So for my resultant, I will draw to the right because that is positive for x, and I'll place my 1.16. Then I'll draw up my 0.4. And I'm done, because it's up, because y is positive when you go upwards. Alrighty, our net force must be the result into these two vectors. The reason being is that we've added a number of force vectors together. The resultant would be the net force, the overall result of all forces added together. That sounds like a net force. Excuse me. Now, to find the net force, first off, we know the Pythagorean theorem, right? So we'll say... Well, I can easily solve the hypotenuse of this thing. It's just going to be my 1.16 squared plus my 0.4 squared. And I should get, and by the way, don't forget to take the square root of all of it. Uh, I see people making that mistake from time to time where they just add the squares together and then forget to take the square root totally, which is no good. Now, if you recall, I had a rule I said a second ago, which is you can only have the shortest distance from the decimal point in your answer. It's true. So we can only have 1.3 newtons as our sig figs. You might get mildly confusing, but you're learning it for the first time now. Let's make sure that we can keep up with that. That's our net force. Now, a net force has a direction, so we want to make sure we calculate that. I always find it convenient to take the inverse tangent of our opposite over our hypotenuse, or <clears throat> not our hypotenuse, but our adjacent, which gets 0.4 divided by 1.16. Now, again, you have to be in degrees mode. 
another reason why it's so vital you have to be in degrees mode that we uh, get the right result. In, in radians, you're going to get a very goofy answer. So, your result should be 19.0. Again, shortest distance to the decimal point? Well, not technically. I'm kind of breaking my rule here right now because the rule with division is that you can only have the lowest number of sig figs, which would mean our 0.4 makes us only have one sig fig. But I don't want to show you an ugly number, and unfortunately I'm breaking the rules right there. Just be aware of it. All righty. So, 19.0 degrees. Uh, we need to know which way. Looks to me like north of east. Because we were going east, and then we had to go north from it to form our angle here. Alrighty, that tells us that our net force is 1.3 newtons at 19.0 degrees north of east. Oops, sorry about that. Well, that's answer. That is the answer to letter A, I believe. Find net force with direction. Check. Next one is if the mass of the object is four kilograms, find the acceleration of the object. Now, acceleration has a direction, so we should be sure that we're working with that. All right. So our net force was 1.3 newtons at 19 degrees. So we also know that F net equals ma. So 1.3 3 newtons is equal to 4.0, which was our mass in the problem, times A. Divide both sides by 4. And we're going to have our scalar value for the acceleration. What the magnitude of the acceleration, in other words. And uh, keep in mind the idea of magnitude is just how much direction is which way. All right, and now I get 0.32. I can only have two sig figs because this is division, and I have two sig figs in my 1.3, so I can only have two sig figs in my answer. We'll fall back to the rule here. Now that's the acceleration, but we have to indicate the direction, and the direction is the same direction as the net force. It's a very important idea, is that whichever way the net force points is the exact same way that the acceleration points. Excuse me. So. There we go. That's a basic idea on how to use problems. It is actually not a simple problem either. Some of the other ones only have two vectors, this one having three and two of them at an angle and only one going straight into a vertical or horizontal direction. So hopefully this helps you get through any of the tricky problems involving vectors and forces. So let me know any questions that you have. You can always post them on Edmodo. Thank you.